My Hero Academia. This is My Hero Academia chapter 301, The Wrong Way to Put Out a Fire, part one. Interesting chapter title. <laughs> yeah, we uh we start off with the uh the first time that Endeavor really kind of uh met with uh Ray, his future wife, as uh he was basically arranging this quirk marriage. Man, he does not look like he's even he's like not thrilled about it, but he has to do it <laughs> in this one. Damn, moment. this this was a good chapter too. This was a good chapter. This uh, was a good chapter. Oh, this is my uh, RGC, really by the way. Oh, yeah. Actually. I mean, when isn't it, Brian? Bri- you you want to shit on people for, like, always yeah, using Black Clover? <laughs> you just do know that RGC. <laughs> no, no, I don't no, always no, give no. this an RGC, all right? You it's... give a One Piece it. Oh, half I give it to One Piece or Jujutsu Kaisen sometimes. Okay, you give it to Jujutsu Kaisen? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Been, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Okay, Brian. Oh, no, nah, this was good. This was really good. Was I really actually good remember reading this and, and like, this was the issue. This was the chapter out of all the other ones that I felt like left me with the most to think about after. Yeah. Like, immediately after. Yeah. So that's worth something, man. Yeah. But, uh. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, you know, they're just like, in this flashback, they're just kind of getting to know each other. And, um, Ray wasn't like. Ray knew that this she was, he was basically marrying her for the quirk, but you know she would she was doing it for her family's sake, because Endeavor is rich, and you know if you marry into this rich and powerful dude's family, you know your family is going to get taken care of. Um, but yeah, we cut over to the present where <laughs> Endeavor is in a hospital bed, just at his lowest point, and um, she's he, uh, Endeavor's like, "Are you really okay?" And Ray's like, "No." That's why I'm here. I mean, I'm not thrilled, you know. Um, we cut over to uh, Dobby, who's just chilling on the couch, looking at his like wounds that he sustained over like this time. Oh yeah, just like ooh, yeah. lots of burns. It burns so good. <laughs> He's loving it, man. Yeah, it's weird. He's you don't think they could have made a support item for him to like not fucking. Burn himself. Some type of through. ointment. <laughs> like, like maybe they could have made a suit solution. for him. Or... I mean, they did that. That's like what Todoroki's suit is. Is that uh, his suit is built to kind of uh, moderate his temperatures on either side. So I mean, in theory, but probably... he was like five years old, man. Well, I mean, honestly, you know. he he died before he was even a hero. You know, like I, before they could even. Oh yeah, that's true. Story. Or died, quote unquote, but. Yeah, so he's just like. I guess so. We'll, 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 we're gonna touch back on that actually because yeah. I have a point to make about it too. Okay. So yeah. Um. But yeah, he's like he can't feel anything honestly, which is interesting. I guess like all his nerves are freaking burnt through, so he doesn't feel the burns that are actually there. Um, and he's like, man, I know dear, I know dad won't won't die. He's tougher than that. Even if he wanted to just like kill himself, he the his position wouldn't allow it. He's going to have to make a public <laughs> statement at some point. And I can't wait to see his pathetic mug. Whoosh. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> yeah, him. man. Um, but yeah, we cut back to the past where uh, Toya is yelling at his dad to, to train him. And, uh, and Endeavor's like, no, you're going to burn. And uh, he just keeps on like... He he keeps on insisting. We learned from the doctor that it's confirmed that yes, your son has way better fire than you do, but he has his However your he has his mother's physicality and he can't take the fucking heat, bruh. You got a weak son, Brett. No, he doesn't say that. Yeah. So essentially he's he's too soft for your for your plans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's way too soft for your plans. Like father like son, you right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. Um so he basically uh we after he's learning this and this is the moment where I never realized like oh it's for sure a rap. He's never going to surpass all might. Um <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, it's, it's over for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh Toya not is basically man. like talking to his sister uh and She's basically like, hey, you should like tr- stop burning yourself and stop training for this. And Toya's like, 
so what? I don't care. I'll get burned. I don't care. I could take it. You know, my dad drilled it into my head that I'm going to defeat All Might, so I'm going to keep going for it. He's very stubborn. Uh, he's just driven by this ambition that's hurting him. And we cut over to the house at night as uh, Ray is like, no, what the fuck are you talking about? That's a terrible plan. Like, Toya knows what you're trying to achieve through these children. So, like, it's just going to break his heart even more. And Endeavor's like, no matter what I say, he just he, he's stubborn. He just comes home with fresh burns every day. This is the only way to give, make him give up since he'll never be the one to surpass. And his face, dude, he's just like, with his fucking face like, um, and it turns out, yeah, I mean, Endeavor's plan is essentially to make Ray a baby farm to eventually end up with a hero, uh, with a kid strong enough to handle both the ice and the flame. Uh, so Toya gets to see himself get replaced over and over. Well, twice. Natsu was born uh, after. And then finally, uh, the Toro- Todoroki we all know and love was also born. And uh, he's the perfect one. He's the one who can use both the ice and the fire quirk without hurting himself either way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Toya's just like, uh-huh. child. yeah, Toya's face is like, uh-huh, uh-huh, cool. I guess I'm just chop liver, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, he starts training. He still like is in the snow, just fucking training himself. And he's like, dad, look, I can do it. I can surpass him. Look how strong my flames are. And uh, he comes home from that training session as Endeavor starts yelling at him like, stop fucking doing this. You're going to hurt yourself. Just play with Natsuo and Fuyumi. Make some friends. God, be a kid. I'll abuse this other kid. You don't have to do this anymore. Uh, but Toya's like m- damaged by this. He's just like, the kids at school say they all want to be heroes. I can't understand that because I've got you for a father. I'm like, Doosh. he's just like, whoa, was that a, like, uh, mm-hmm. was that, was that an insult? Like, I, think so. I don't want to be, like, geez, how, and how young is he to be able to, Come up with that slick of remark. I think he's the oldest kid, so he's like, he's probably yeah. like eleven at that point, ten. Um, <laughs> my one thing I noticed is that like they they cut to all the Taroki's faces and uh, fucking uh, Shoto's face the entire time. <laughs> <Just like. laughs> yeah, his baby face. Mm. It's just like. Mm. <laughs> fuck is going on here (laughs) it's it's so funny because it's consistently that the whole time uh as toya is over here having a breakdown shoto's just like "Mm, sucks for you i have no idea what's going on oh yeah i am i am a baby and baby (laughs) And, uh, you know, his his mental breakdown continues like, you lit this fire on me and I, it's not going out. I can't just pretend it's not there. Look at me, Endeavor. And uh, as the flame starts to just like sprout off of Toya, he locks on to Shoto <laughs> in that face. <laughs> and uh, he just immediately just starts lunging at him with the fire. Uh, and everybody's like, fuck, trying to get out of the way. Uh, and we cut back to the present where Ray says, like, you don't get to claim you're hurting more than anybody because and you're not the only one who really didn't see him. And that's where the chapter ends. It's kind of it's kind of like abrupt, but. Yeesh. Very dark, yeah, man. You see where he lashes out. I'm interested to see how this continues. Me too. Um, there was a, a small point I wanted to make um, earlier when they were talking about. I guess uh, the all right. It was at the point where Endeavor basically was figuring out, like, yeah, this is over for him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't. Like, it's not worth investing time in. And you know, like Brian said, like, there's there's, there's no reason he 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 couldn't have just gotten older, understood his limitations, and then figured out ways to get around it, and then became really strong in his own right. His dad. Endeavor was so obsessed that he needed, and, and he it just gave him this like super tunnel vision where he could say the only way it can be, I can achieve what I want is for it to be this exact way. And 
I think that's what was really toxic. And, you know, that's something I noticed uh, that we've all noticed, I think, as well, right? That the author really likes to put messages behind, like, everything he's doing. Like, these general messages that keep getting repeated. And it's like, you got to give... Uh, what is it? Like, he, like he, 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 he allowed his ignorance to snuff out possibility. Because th- cause yeah. this is a tragedy. Yeah, obviously, he's a bad, you know, he's a bad guy now. And we're figuring out why he's a bad guy. It's not about all pure edge. You know, I was cracking mad jokes before, but like that's, I think that's what they're going to address here. And I want to like, just acknowledge that and say like, that is a great point. And you don't have to have superpower, a superpowered family, for that to be the case, you know, to draw a parallel there, like, you know, to just snuff out someone's shine because of your, your own ignorance. Yeah. You know, uh, I was thinking about his it. own child, man. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Um, there's something about Endeavor that I think like that this is like a bigger commentary on, I guess, arranged marriages and the system of very traditional, I guess, like these like certain like Eastern cultures that where they they put a lot of emphasis on having like, say, you know, the like the firstborn son or whatever. Uh, and there's something about like the quirk thing, which is kind of an equivalent to that, where you're just trying over and over again to get a desired result in terms of your children, which is really crazy. Yeah. And it's kind of like a backwards way of thinking. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's, that's the parallel here is that uh, you're, you're basically breeding for like, just trying to find the boy for a set. Like, for example, there's like families out there that, you know, try, you know, like there's like fathers out there. It's like, I want a boy. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to stop, like, we're going to have babies until I have finally a boy, you know? And I think that's the parallel is drawn here. It's very weird. Endeavor is a strange one because I've been thinking about, like, damn, dude, he really made his wife into a baby factory. Like, every nine months, she made her, he made her, like, push Promise her. Promise Neverland, yo. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, dude, it's, it's very dark <laughs> when you really, like, strip away the layers of this superpower society and looking for the right superpower. It's crazy. It's like sociopathic nearly. I don't know how yeah, this bounces back from that, but we'll figure it this out. This whole situation is very complex, you know? Like, um, obviously, like, every time they show All Might in this chapter, it's to dig him into a deeper hole, essentially. Mm-hmm. Like, every time All Might shows his face, it's him going deeper and deeper into this obsession with his dream. Um, and the intensity burning. So it's like as as All Might rises, Endeavor kind of falls. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like the even the way that the panels are set up, like it's like Natsuo yeah. is an afterthought. Like his at Natsuo's birth is literally an afterthought. They don't even go into detail about Natsuo at all. It's yeah. just they had the baby. All right, next. Oh, oh yeah, look, Toroki. That's it. I mean, Shoto. That's it. It's a it, it, we're we're good, we're set. Mm-hmm. Like, um, not so. Well I, I, I agree. If you don't, if you don't mind me going in, like, just to kind of go mm-hmm. off your point, like, I noticed you, like, you're 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 so on point because they even have a scene, at least where where um where the where the eldest son like Dabi, I, keep, I forget his actual name, Ng. No, that's the dad. Yeah, no, whatever. Yeah. Not so. Oh yeah. Um, what when what's in Wait. not to? No. Oh, no. you're talking about what's not to. No, the oldest brother. Wait, the oldest one? Toya, That's Toya, Toya, Toya. 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 Okay, there. Where you know he at least has a scene with the sister where she gets to talk and 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 kind of present herself. And I feel like that was not allowed by Endeavor, but it, it was shown by the author to say like there is a sense of family here because, and this was this was like while he was figuring out that um like he wouldn't be able to surpass all night, but he still wasn't completely sure. So you're right, like he. I feel like he cared and he wasn't that hardcore and that mean yet mm-hmm. or didn't move with that attitude towards his children yet until he realized that, oh, like it's not going to work out with him. Boom. Had another baby. Didn't work out. Then he immediately started thinking about the next one. So, yeah, it really was like Maxwell specifically was completely just like, whatever, man, you might as well go somewhere else. And yeah. that's probably why he reacted the way he did when we seen him. Like he really had a chip on his shoulder. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't the kind of chip that like Todoroki had, where it was just pure like like that 
that pure animosity and almost like that one in that like that vengeance. Yeah. Where Natsu was just super hurt. Yeah. So super like duper hurt. my, my yeah. thing is my my thing I think about it is it's like you know how all right so Toya is the one who had like the hope inspired into him just to have it get ripped away and Natsuo was the one who never had that hope given to him in the, yeah. to begin with. So like he just had the emotional neglect. That's all. Mm-hmm. But Toya was built up like he was the world. Like he 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 had the world on on at the palm of his hand just to get that emotional neglect that uh, Natsuo always had, and that's what like kind of made him go crazy, mm-hmm. especially as a child. That kind of man- emotional manipulation really fuck yeah. will, will destroy somebody. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Well said. Well said. One thing I'm interested in seeing is like, because this event with Toya, it doesn't change Endeavor. It just kind of makes him worse. I'm very interested to see, like, why is it that he didn't learn from this? Like, what was it about? Because he had this whole thing would have, you would think this moment would have changed his mind and seen, made him see the error of his ways. But it really took to the present to realize what's happening. Like, when he started yeah. his, with his relationship with Shoto. You know when he started to change? When he achieved his goal of being number one. That's when he started to realize that all this pursuit for this shit is not worth it. I think he was. And, I think he was feeling it a little bit before. I think this change started a little earlier, but things, yeah, things definitely got exasperated by him nearly dying. Yeah, yeah, one way, yeah, re- re- yeah. Regardless, I remember it yeah, happening. Like I, you know, that had something. To, that had something to do with it too. Yeah, I remember him trying a little earlier than that too, like <laughs> doing little things to try to improve himself and try to see. Uh, try to become a better person, but yeah, but, I don't think you're wrong. I think you're. I think like that moment definitely like was a real wake up call for him, where he's like, I gotta fast track this process because I really fucked up a lot. <laughs> uh, but uh, one more thing. Uh, there's actually two more things. Like, first, like, I feel like all this information and more detail into like the past and all the things that Endeavor actually did. Is coming up now because it's just to remind it's just to remind us that like Endeavor was like all in his self self pity and all that shit and wallowing and sad and shit and um it can make you feel like you gotta feel sorry for him to an extent. But this is just a reminder that like just because you want redemption and you want to change doesn't take away all the shit that you've done to 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 your family and to like how fucked up this was like sure you're you want to be a changed man but like and you regret what you did but that doesn't change anything Mm -hmm. and um but another thing that the end of this chapter kind of addressed was that it wasn't only endeavor who was at fault for this essentially Mm -hmm. like you know, it takes two parents to have a bad household, you know, and Ray, I feel like another reason why Ray broke down and like did what she did to Totoro- to Shoto was because she also has her regrets of what she could have done. She could have stopped. She could have tried more to like stop this from happening. She could have been there for Toya during all this. There's not a single point in this chapter that shows anybody like talk like aside from his sister there yes, isn't anybody sister. who 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 tries to console him or talk to him not even his mom yeah so no you're right um i think and that, you know that's consistent in even the way she decided to go through with this quirk marriage where it's very passive where it's like she's she'll do it but she it's not what she really wants you know it's not really what she really feels yeah and that's a that's a really good point to bring up i i very much agree with that um, lots to think about with my hero academia. Yeah, there's just and nobody's sure there's victims to this stuff, but like again, this is really complicated. But there's also not really any like heroes in this situation as well, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, family dynamics are hard. You know, like no matter even if even with like good families, there's like issues and you know there's there's shit. There's like skeletons and closets in a way and. Nobody has more of a skeleton in closet than uh, than the Todoroki family, though. 
That's pretty fucking Dude. intense. These these chapters with the Todoroki family have been so fucking incredibly good for me. Like I love how like how complex it is and how like, you know, how he's handling it with so much care because this is a really sensitive topic and if he messes up in a single spot, it's not going to it's not going to be good. Yeah. So, I've said as much he, as well. I appreciate that he's slowing it down. Mm-hmm. Um he's he's, he's He's putting the microscope on the situation, and that naturally leads to you know the pace to getting slowed down. And I appreciate it <laughs> more yeah. than anybody else. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think I've said this maybe before I even started the podcast. I remember do saying that like when Endeavor started to like try to turn a corner on himself, it could, if done right, this could be one of the like greatest character arcs of all time. You know what I mean? Like, if it's if it's done, and it's not to even say that it has to end with him completely redeemed or forgiven, but whatever this is, whatever's happening right now, has like a lot of potential philosophically to be very fucking cool. In a mainstream shonen manga, especially, yeah, no, yeah, especially I mean, in this time, in this day and age where nothing is forgiven, you know, and um, this series kind of reflects. We're, we're, talk, we're talking to you, Mineta. <laughs> your you little you little juice headed pervert your future me too story <laughs> you, you, i feel i feel like a lot of the way that the media works in my hero academia is similar to how it is in real life so maybe like he's trying to make a statement about like you know redemption and uh and um like can a, it's not even just can a family forgive him it's can the world forgive him you know like yeah. there's especially now with it being aired so yeah. We'll see what happens, but this is, man, this has so much potential to be such a good fucking part of the of the manga. Like, same. This guy never fails to impress me. Yeah, um, great chapter. Uh, I I think that's all I got to say about my hero academia.